This is what I'm building next. It's some storage for the understairs of this house. These are wicker boxes. This is just an end panel. It's the end of that. There's going to be some coat hooks down here. And I've got to create a door in here to get to the electrical units behind. It's all going to be made of ply with a beach lipping on to match the, the sort of um, the panelling that's already in there. And this is as far as I've got. I need to start building it now to refine the details. And I went and got saw blades yesterday. They were ready last week, but I wasn't. Eight quid each plus the bat for these little plunge saw blades. And these ten inch were eleven pound each. Eleven pound. And this big one, this three hundred mil, fourteen pound. Nice and sharp, I presume, underneath that. Now I'll get on with building this. Got some sizes on here, just need to rip some boards. And I'm going to build the two together and then try and work out this top corner for this piece here. Because that is that there. I'm not going to be painting this, spraying it. It's going to be painted in the house by then. Because it needs to sort of match the interior that's already there. If I was to spray it, it'd look too square and new and shiny. And there's a lip in to go on all these. It's going to be made of beach. The rest of it's oak, but it's been painted. So I'm just going to use beach. And the joints don't have to be perfect. Because like I say, it needs to sort of sort of match what's already there. And this is 18mm Q ply, they call it. And like a lot of these plies, they seem to finish at 17mm. I've got two pieces to cut. For the sides of this unit here, that's those ones there, 398, so I've just made them 400mm. So I'm just working up to my pencil lines. But for the next ones, for these, I've got one, two, three, four, four, I might be able to get these pieces out of the offcuts. I'll use my stops so that I get a more consistent cut. Right, for these ones, like I was saying, I've got one, two, three, four, possibly five to cut, or some bits anyway. So, pencil mark there, and I set this sliding stop to that distance, and it's square at the end, so I can just make sure that's square, and I'll do the same at the other end. And I've got some clamps that I made out of airwing clamps. Just top, cut the top off and welded it on the other way. I've got four of these to cut now using the stop. And I'll leave that like that. And if I need to cut another one, then it's set up. All I've got to do is lay it out again. Now this is the bottom piece and I need to cut one that goes in between the uprights and on my drawing I've made it 18mm like I said most of this plywood it don't come in at 18mm it's close to 17mm so I've cut two pieces put it at the end there pencil mark and I'll measure from that end up to my pencil mark and cut one to that size and I'm using me homemade square I mentioned this before cut some grooves in it in an old piece of oak glued a piece of ply in and then I ran it over my table saw because I know that cut square and I know that it's square because when I cut this I cut the first one I measured it corner to corner that's square so I've got faith in this thing 
So now I've got that, the shelf on top of the top, this is representing the uprights that are going to on each side. Same there. So now I put some clamps on just so that I can mark around where my uprights are going to go. And I'm doubling up the uprights just to get that thickness. There's going to be a lipping on the front of them. And I don't want that lipping to be, you know, like a sort of T-shape. I want a wide lipping. And these boxes are going to bang against that, so I'm just going to double up these boards. There's only three, so it's only a few bits. But I'll mark these, square them over. And then I'm, I'm going to do what I've done in the past, where I lay a board on, put biscuits in, and stand it up. Uh, I'm going to put this fine tooth blade in. You just want to pull this stuff off. You can just put it in and put a piece of wood through and it'll rip it all off, but just be careful because they will be sharp underneath. And I welded a couple of nuts on the end and put sleeve anchors, pieces of sleeve anchors inside. Use them as like packers. It works a lot better now. This is still a little bit long. Oh, I need to bracket or something to stop it wobbling around. So they're going to be me uprights. And these were just the off cuts, so I cut them in half and I squared up one end and I marked the front because they're almost square. I just wanted to make sure that I get them the right way around, but I'll put that to the front. So they're going to go like that, but between these two, of course. And then I've got a 2 by one batten frame to go on the floor and I'll be able to pack that up get it somewhat like level when I sit this on top and I've got an off cut that's going to do for the end and that one's nearly two meters tall so I'll make up a little jig for doing I'm going to put biscuits in three maybe maybe just two So I'm going to reuse this one, see it's got a block on the end. First one's 70mm in. So I'll rub some of these out, mark 70mm in. And that just happens to be where the domino, the biscuit joiner, sorry, sits on the end like that. And it works out fine for me, I can get a screw in the end. But I'll remark this. And these are good, quite good rubbers. That one's 70 mil in there. So 
So that one's about 70 mil in there. It's slightly off and I want these to be the same both sides, you know, so in case I get one the wrong way around or something. So that's there. So what I'm gonna do spin that around. Mark that one there. It should be exactly the same. I'm going to flip this one over. That's not a bad cut, but it's not perfect. And that's the way the track was set on top. It's a fairly new blade. And the I swapped the, the splinter guard over a little while ago. But underneath is always a cleaner cut. Right, nice sharp pencil. I bought these a while ago and seen a screw fix that being tight with those. I'm going to have to use my own. I don't use hard pencils, they're hard to rub out, they cut into the wood. Just a standard pencil is good enough. So I'll mark where the uprights are going to go. So on my drawing I've got 365 gap, that's 365 as well. And then this is just going to be like a stuff hole. I might end up putting a piece of timber on there just to, just to represent one of them. But I'll do that on site. But they want this bit leaving open just as extra space. So 365, 365 there, but I need two of these, so I use my pieces to mark that, and 365 again, and I've got an X, so I can lay a timber on like that once I've squared it across. And that'll stand up like that. And then I'll pin another board on there. Those two are marked. What I'm going to do now is take that off. And then I'll put a V. And I'll put one underneath there. That represents my front edge. And both got writing on, so I'll just try and remember that that's that's that side. I've got my front edge there. Up. That's so I'll get some biscuits cut. So I've squared those over, squared those marks over, put a little X to remind me that it's going that way. Same on that one. I've got front edge here, front edge there, clean cut to this side because this is like the inside that you're going to see. So if I lay that down, line it up to that line, get some clamps on it, then I can cut some biscuits in there and down and that will stand up like that. Not bad. You can just see my pencil line there, maybe. And there'll be another one when I put it all together. I'll do the same on this one. And to get this right, you can't have a gap under here. If that pushes down, then that cut will be in the wrong position.
I'll do the same to that one because I'm using the face side and the same distances all I've got to do is make sure that this is back and back just have to make sure that they're this way up when I do these ones here and they'll flip up the same what I mean really is like face side down you know what I mean that side up all the time right so that's those done and you know like that so you got the face sides here I've got to do it on the ends here so imagine this was laying down with the side there and I laid this on that side and then stood it up so that's the face side this is upside down so that's the face side so just like those were with the face down this is face down and I'm just going to use this as a backer board but I'm going to do the same thing use my template put two lines on and put two cuts in the end on both ends and then when I come to do the uprights I'll do that the same way as I've done this right now for the bottom I sit the sides on the bottom if I can and then the you know there's no way they can drop past but imagine that's like that imagine that's one of the sides this one's nearly two minutes long so I can't get it in here but what I'll do is make a pencil mark on my side and I'll work to the outside using the fence and the same on this put two pencil marks down so we're working to that edge and that edge and I'll put the fence on there make a cut there there and then on the side I'll make two cuts like that then because we're working to the fence those should line up So now they're cut at both ends. This is the end. I've marked the front edge, but I've marked the outside just because I like to mark the inside. Oops. So that will be sitting on there like that. So I'll put a couple of pencil marks on here and here. And although these are the same distance, I always work from the front edge with me timber like that so now I cut them two in Biscuits add some strength, but they're, they're more for alignment in this case because these boards are sat on like that. You see, absolutely flush. Now, when I put screws in, I'll put a screw in each end and one up the middle. But because they're sat on, they're not going to go anywhere anyway. And one day I'll buy a little domino, but imagine I've got almost that much. You know holding power your yeah, domino will only give you that sort of width side what I need to do is work out the height the height here where this timber is going to go I haven't drawn it on 
so I'm going to use one of these uprights we got front mark so that'll be like that imagine that's the end then there'll be a divider divider and then the other end so that'll be going on like that then the top will be on top like that and I cut that one I cut the top from the face side you know it's doing that so I need to mark that put this timber on my square line and cut down and I'll do exactly the same on this long one here but next door so I'll square that over I need to cut there so like that and that'll be the end that stands on there on the other end actually I'll go do it on the other one so this is the other end I've already cut the bottom ones I've just marked the top so I'll slide that over just use it as a straight edge now I want to be cutting that side just like I did on the little one and this one's going to be standing up like that so the triangle will be down like that the little one that I've just done something like that that top will sit in there there should be enough space underneath for the dividers and if I get it wrong I've got no choice but I'm going to have to fill it I'm talking about filler I ran out of filler a little while ago so I went to using my body filler for van but it's a bit thin and creamy so I bought the thicker one it says for deep repairs it's supposed to be non-sagging so I haven't had a chance to try it but when I bought it what I did was oh, these ones come with these the hardener and when you mix in little amounts you always run out of that hardener first so in here this is my old tin I've got a new tin in the van that's pretty much empty and there's just there's just a you know like a centimeter on the bottom of the tin I'll open it there's not much in the bottom of the tin but me being a tight ass I want to use that up but I've got no hardener. I don't want to use the hardener from my new tin because then I'll be short again. So what I did when I ordered that, I ordered this, which is another packet of that, of that. Same stuff. Two pound fifty free delivery, and I gave it a go just to see, you know, see if it'd work with this stuff, and rock hard that works fine so now I don't have to be scared about how much of this I use or for these how much I use for these I can, I can go in there actually and now I can get plenty in and I can use this tin up but hopefully these are all in the right place I'll find out now as I'm gonna just temporarily put it together Right, so something like that. I need to, like I say, double these up. It's only two bits of wood. I need to double them up. Like that. That one's the wrong way around. I don't matter. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> See? Nice cut out. And then... One of those is going to go in there, nice fat lipping, like I say I'm doubling these up so that the lipping ain't hanging over so they don't bang on them 
and there's going to be a lipping on here but I'm going to put something behind it with maybe like a 45 on just to just to give it some stiffness but also you know to same, the same reason it'll get banged so I'll put something behind it to stop stop it having a lip now what I've got to do is work out that diagonal I could have worked out the angles on the drawing but I think it's best if I build that other shelf unit that's going to go behind here it's going to have four of those in it and it'll be pretty much the same as that but on its edge so I'll stand that one in and I'll be able to pull that board straight then to that unit because it'll have a nice straight cut along one edge so I'll be able to pull that board straight that one's not really going anywhere I'll just make sure all this is square and then I can mark straight across, string line it or put a timber on, whatever's, whatever I've got. And the same for the back of that other unit that's going to go behind there, I can just, I can run that in the same diagonal. Right, so the same for this one, this is the shelf unit. I've marked off where my shelves are going to go. So, take them off. Then I've got a face mark, and I'll flip that one over, square these marks over, and do the same where I'm going to stand up my shelves like that. And I've got all my shelves and the bottom cut. And I'm letting the top fly for the moment because I've got to do that angle bit on it. So, same again, best side up with cleanest cut. Put that to my pencil line, lay it down. And it's going to sit there. I need to do that to all of them, just to remind me. They're all going to be the same, so I don't need to mark them. I just need to mark which side is the face. But it's normally obvious because it's the cleanest cut. And I've done the same again with this. That distance there, it's that distance there. I don't want to rub that one out just in case I might need it in a bit. So I've marked it, and I try and get it right. So I screwed that one together. So I'm going to put a 9mm back on this. And around here, this is the face side. It's going to get packed out between the two by the back of this. This whole, whole wall is going to be 18mm. So I've got to get a door in it. So that'll double that up. And then there's going to be another board on here. So that when I put a lip in on this front edge, that'll be about 50mm. So I can get that square profile, you know, like panelled, panelled around like that. And the bottom, it's sat on the bottom. I'll get some lippings on here and then between the wall and here I'll just pack that out and put a lipping on there and once I've done that I can mark that distance there, cut a board, I'll cut a board to that size to go on the bottom half and then there'll be a board to go on there to create create a doorway like I say, the door will open that way and I'm thinking of putting panelling around there and then I can almost hide that door, there's the new post here so yeah, don't know I'll put the door in and everything and see what it looks like.